Greetings internet, it's Monica and today I am finally going to be uploading my book expo slash book con book haul plus I have a couple of exciting unboxings, a giveaway to talk about, some books that I've recently purchased, a couple book of the month club books, like I just I just got a lot of books to haul and it's a little overwhelming. So like I said, I do have a giveaway to tell you all about. So this month I am actually a novel box rep and I am not being paid by novel box, but I just sort of thought it was cool. I really love the novel. They are part of Little Brown and I just love their marketing and how they like engage with readers. I think it's really cool and I really love the idea of their novel boxes. They are monthly bookish boxes, but you can't subscribe to them. You have to win them. So you can enter every month in order to win that month's novel box. And for this box in particular, if you would like to win it, you have until June 30th. So I will have the link to enter in the description box below in case you want to do that. But now let's open this up and find out what's inside. So inside, ooh, the first thing we have is a novel uh, tote bag and it says booked all week. So going into it I knew that the curator of this box would be Cecilia Vanessa and I also knew I knew that her newest book would be in it and I also knew one of the books that she would be including in it um, that I just like already love so much. Um, and so that's partially why I said yes. So Cecilia Vanessa's new book is The Summer of Us and I have like a, I think I've talked about this in the past, but one of my favorite like contemporary tropes is like travel and I just, I love like reading about people going on adventures, going to new places. It's just like, it's something that I love doing so much in my real life so I love reading about it too and that is what this book is about. Basically this is about a big group of friends who are all going on a two-year excursion through Europe from Paris to Prague and they've actually been living in Europe for their entire high school career and so it's sort of like their last hurrah before they all go off to college back I believe in America and that just sounds really fun to me. I, I am just super intrigued to see where they go, what hijinks they get up to. I'm sure there will be some romance and some angst and I'm just, I'm here for it. I just, I love travel and I love why contemporary. So I'm very excited for that. I guess I'll talk about, they also include like cute little things on the top. The very top there is this really cute pride pin. That's this cute rainbow heart. I love that. That is definitely going to be going on something. Probably my like jean jacket. That's really cute. The next item in here is a sleep mask and it says Bon Voyage. And then there is this cute luggage tag from Bandeau. I love Bandeau. It's like this pink luggage tag and it says I'm out of here in like rose gold. So also in the box is Cecilia Vanessa's book Seven Days of You um, and this is another Y contemporary. Very. Ooh, it's set in Tokyo. Oh my gosh. <gasps> this is so exciting. Sophia has seven days left in Tokyo before she moves back to the States. Ooh, is this like, I feel like this might be like a common theme with her characters that they've like lived abroad and they're going back to the US and they're like stressed about it. The next book in the box is The Geography of You and Me by Jennifer E. Smith. I have actually never read anything by this author, but I know a lot of people really love her writing. This book takes place in New York City and it actually takes place, I don't know, I don't know if you if you guys remember, but a few years ago there was this huge blackout that happened in New York City and the entire city shut down. This book basically takes place during that. And then the last book in here, which is like very different from all the others, but was one of the reasons why I said yes to it because I don't currently have my physical copy with me and I wanted a physical copy because I wanted to reread it. And that is The Diviners by Libba Bray. There are few things more in this world that I love as much as spreading the joy and wonderfulness that is the Diviner series amongst other readers. I am so excited for people to get this box and hopefully pick up Diviners because this is, in my opinion, 
one of the best if not the best YA paranormal fantasy books out there right now. It is so brilliant. There's so much depth to it. The characters are all so interesting. I guess I should talk about what this book is about. If you don't know what it's about, you probably haven't watched my channel much. This book takes place in 1920s New York City, follows a large cast of characters who are all teens coming to and living in New York City, and they all develop divine abilities. So like, for example, Evie, one of the main characters, is able to touch an object and like read it history. The book itself is super fun and spooky, but at the same time it has really amazing like interpersonal relationships. It's so incredibly diverse. She writes about like the Harlem Renaissance to the sort of creation of Chinatown in New York City and the the fear of Asian immigrants. She talks about just xenophobia in general and uh, eugenics and it's just it's so brilliant and it's such a brilliant read especially right now like with what's going on in the country like this series is even more important and like timely and just so good it's so good now i'm gonna hop into two books that i purchased this past month the first one is anger is a gift by mark oshiro this was one of my most anticipated reads of the year i actually accidentally purchased this twice not sure how i did that but I did it, so gonna try and figure out what to do with that second copy. Will probably be a giveaway at some point in the future. This book follows Moss, who attends high school in Oakland, which is like outside of San Francisco, uh, and it is about him and his friends dealing with constant intimidation and harassment from the law enforcement who are like stationed around his school. Um, so it deals with that, but it also, Moss also, um, gets panic attacks and so he's also dealing with that, the grief of, of losing his father. I have just heard such amazing things about this book. Then I also bought The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. It is not YA but it is like I'm halfway through and I would say it's like it would appeal to older YA readers I think still. This is a fantasy story that was inspired by the Sino-Japanese War. You start off with this main character who's going to this combat school and then it deals with this war that's happening while she's there along with gods and monsters and like having all those myths and, and legends come into it and it's super dark, <laughs> uh, very violent. I know that there is a whole list of trigger warnings for this book, so if you are thinking about reading this book, I would recommend looking out for those because I like especially know that for sexual assault and rape, there are like very real trigger warnings for this book. I haven't gotten there yet, but I know what happens because I read the trigger warnings. Yeah, I've just heard absolutely amazing things about this story so I was really excited to get my hands on it and finally read it and I'm halfway through it and I am really really liking it so far. Now on to the Book Expo haul. The first book from Book Expo that I want to talk about is Girl Squad by Sam Maggs. This is 20, this is a story about 20 female friendships that changed history. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a bunch of different stories about women who are friends and the things that they accomplished while being friends. So for example, you have Sharon and Shirley Firth, the indigenous twin sisters who went on to become Olympic skiers and barrier breakers in the sport, the Edinburgh Seven, the band of gals, gal pals who fought to become the first women admitted to medical school in the UK. And it just sounds like so empowering and wonderful. So I'm so excited to dive into this and read about all of these amazing friendships. Then I got Odd One Out by Nick Stone this is one of my most anticipated books of the year because I adored Dear Martin by Nick Stone. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. This story is told from three perspectives. You get all three sides to this story and it basically is a YA contemporary dealing with different types of relationships. You have like three friends who are all sort of attracted I think to each other or other people and it's complicated. I don't really know a ton more outside of that. I'm pretty sure one of the girl characters is going to be bi or pansexual because one of the lines on the back is I'm the new girl but Jupiter and Courtney make me feel like I'm right where I belong. Also I want to kiss him 
and her. Then I picked up Artemis Fowl and this book is going to be a movie so they were doing signings with him of this book and also some other of his releases. I believe he has a new book coming out soon but I wanted this because I really want to reread Artemis Fowl before the book comes out and meeting him was so cool. He was just like so nice. He like asked me what booktube was and he was just like I don't know it's just like really cool getting to talk to someone who was like such a big part of like my childhood and I yeah I'm just really excited to jump back into this world because I loved the Artemis Fowl series so much when I was little and I'm so excited that they're doing a film of it because I wanted that so much when I was younger and hopefully it's good. <laughs> Another middle grade book I got is The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell and this book the way that I've sort of been describing it to friends when I talk about it is that it's sort of like the Polar Express but minus Christmas, which like, you know, I love Christmas so it's a little sad, but this is about a train, a magical train that travels everywhere to space, Trollville, through shipwrecks, and it eventually goes through Susie's living room and Susie ends up getting swept away onto the train. She sneaks on, she becomes the assistant to the postmaster of the train, and goes on this like adventure on this train. It sounds so fun. I don't know. I just think it sounds really cute and I'm excited to read it. Then I picked up Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Karam. Sorry if we've moved a bit. Camera died. Anyways, as I was saying, Darius the Great is Not Okay, one of my most anticipated books of the year. It is about Darius who is half Persian and he is just struggling with that identity, with sort of feeling like he's not um, sort of just struggling with feeling that he doesn't really belong anywhere. And the first line of it is Darius Kellner speaks better Klingon than Farsi. I am always really interested in books that deal with being mixed race because I am mixed race and I understand that feeling of like just not belonging anywhere <laughs> and trying to like figure out your identity and all of that. So I'm really excited to read how this author sort of tackles that subject. Well, then I have a sampler of King of Scars. This is the only sampler that I picked up this year and I every time I look at it I just get stressed <laughs> because like I want to read it so bad but this book does not come out until when does this book come out the entirety of this book does not come out until January 2019 so if I read this I will have read like 50 pages 52 pages of the book do I want to read the sampler and then wait you know or do I just want to look at it and be excited this is a thing I haven't decided yet. I'll probably have a moment of weakness sometime over the next few months and read it eventually, but as of right now, I'm not going to, but oh, this cover is just everything. It's so luxurious and beautiful. I loved the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I especially loved Nikolai. He was everything to me. I remember being so mad when I first found out that Six of Crows was a thing because I was like, where's my Nikolai book? I don't care about these other people. I want Nikolai. Um, I still haven't read Six of Crows because I'm horrible and I just haven't read it yet, but I really want to. Also because I know that some of the characters from that are also going to be having perspectives in this book along with Nikolai and I'm really excited for that. I'm just like excited to see how she brings all these characters into one story and I just, I just love Nikolai so much. <laughs> If you're not familiar with the Grishaverse yet, I highly recommend reading these books. These are like YA fantasy inspired by Russia. People have different types of abilities. There's lots of different relationships and it has the first, the trilogy has like such a good like takedown of that sort of like Edward Cullen style character where you have like this character who's like ancient and like has an attraction to a much younger teen character uh, and sort of the commentary that she makes on that I think is so spot on but yeah I just I love the series so much and I'm so excited that this book is happening yay then I got Muse of Nightmares by Eleni Taylor which I'm very excited about novel actually had an event during book expo where you could go to their offices and they had everyone at different tables and it was like editor speed dating so they had like different members of the editorial team going around all the tables and just like talking about the book that they're like most excited for that they've worked on that's coming out soon so we got a sneak peek of a bunch of books that are coming out 
later this year, early next year. I was able to select a few that are being sent to me, so I'm excited for whenever those arrive. Uh, but we all got News of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, along with another book that I will talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, this is the sequel to Strange the Dreamer, which is a whimsical book that I don't really know how to describe. I'm almost done with Strange the Dreamer, and I, for the life of me, could not figure out how to describe it. <laughs> um, it's just like whimsical and adventureful, eh, adventureful. It just like, it feels like the kind of book that just feels enchanted in and of itself. Like you've fallen into some like old dusty storybook and it's beautifully written and yeah, that's the best description I can give and this is the second book in that. So hopefully that was helpful even though it wasn't. The other book that they gave out during that event was Frostblood. This is the first book in a trilogy? Trilogy. Ellie Blake, the author of this book, spoke at this event, as did Lainey Taylor, um, but Ellie Blake spoke and she basically said that the main, like, dude love interest was sort of inspired by Zuko from Avatar and I was sold when she said that because like Zuko is everything to me. This is about a girl who has like fl like fire abilities in a world where people with like ice abilities are in power and so she ends up somehow coming into contact with the like Prince of Ice or whatever and it just like it just sounds sort of like there's probably going to be some hate to love going on. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of angst and, you know, <laughs> it's just like a lot of tropes that I love getting checked off here. So I'm actually very excited for this. And the cover is really pretty too. It like looks like ice. I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but in person it's beautiful. The rest of the books that I got at Book Expo were actually all comics. So I am going to reserve those for my next comics and manga haul. So if you would like to see those, just watch that video. It should be up sometime in the next couple of weeks. But I did want to talk about a couple other books. The next two are two of my Book of the Month Club picks. The first one is The Kiss Quotient. This is about Stella Lane who comes up with algorithms for like everything in life and, and she's like trying to use that skill in order to help her with her love life and she ends up hiring a man who looks like he's straight out of a Korean drama to be to like act as her boyfriend and like teach her how to be a girlfriend and like that kind of stuff and that like trope is a trope that I love like the whole like having someone pretend to date you and so whenever I hear that something has that trope I'm in also if it has Asian characters double in. Okay, that's fine. They just all fell, but it's fine. <laughs> then I have the book of Essie by Megan McLean Weir. And this book, it is from Book of the Month, but I actually saw this also while I was at BookCon. Penguin Random House had this like event for bloggers and booktubers, bookstagrammers, etc. And they had different tables for each of their imprints. And, and one of them was Knopf. And every time I went next to this book someone from Knopf got like so excited they just have like so much passion for this book I can tell and it sounds fascinating. This follows Essie who is in a family a very conservative religious family who have a reality show which might sound familiar for anyone who might watch like TLC or channels like that. I feel like there are a couple like reality shows that are sort of along those lines and Essie ends up uh, getting pregnant uh, out of wedlock while she's a teenager. And so this story follows her dealing with not only being a pregnant teen, but also dealing with her incredibly conservative family and just like also dealing with like being part of this reality show and her religion and potentially breaking away from her religion. Uh, but it just sounds absolutely fascinating. This next book I actually picked up at uh, Scholastic because uh, I have friends who work at Scholastic so I recently got to go visit um, and my friend Jeffrey is an editor there and this is a book that he edited and I'm so excited for it because the, when you guys hear this premise you are also going to be so excited for it and it's called The Love and Lies of Roxana Ali. Now Roxana is the daughter of very conservative Muslim parents 
and she's really struggling with living in that environment. It says she rolls her eyes when they blatantly favor her brother and saves her crop tops and makeup for parties her parents don't know about. Luckily, only a few more months stand between her carefully monitored life in Seattle and her new life in Caltech. When her parents catch her kissing her girlfriend, Ariana, all of Roxana's plans fall apart. And so they end up taking Roxana to Bangladesh and she gets thrown into this world of arranged marriages and tradition and it's about her breaking away from that and or trying to break away from that and trying to live her own life and I'm just really excited for the story to be out into the world it sounds so incredibly important I'm excited to read it and share it with you all so yeah I just wanted to talk about that one this one comes out January 2019 so got a little time before it comes out. These next books I didn't request, they just sort of showed up, but they all sound pretty interesting, so I thought I'd share them with you guys. The first one is Grim Lovelies by Megan Shepard, who is the author of the Mad the Madman's Daughter, the Madman's Daughter Daughter trilogy, which I've never read. Have any of you read it? Did you like it? Let me know what you thought, because that's probably gonna decide if I read this one. I believe this is sort of like an urban fantasy that takes place in Paris, and other than that, it just it sounds interesting. Apparently there's a bunch of different like paranormal creatures in this story and they all are maybe a bit political. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Lastly, I got a box from Simon and & Schuster and this was also a surprise and it's basically a box full of Deb Coletti books, which is exciting because I've never actually read anything by Deb Coletti. I did not realize that she had won at the National Book Award for Honey Baby Sweetheart, so very excited for that. But the book that I'm most excited for that was in that box is A Heart and a Body in a World. Um, and this story follows Annabella, or Annabelle. Um, this story follows Annabelle, who uh, basically this guy ends up texting a bunch of girls like trying to get them to come and meet up with him and none of they all ignore him except for one girl and that girl ends up being murdered uh, and so this is sort of just her dealing with her survivor's guilt and she is a runner and she's doing this sort of like cross-country run or, or something along those lines um, and I'm just really intrigued for it. Also in here we have The Queen of Everything and The Nature of Jade, which are two other Deb Coletti books that I haven't read. I haven't read anything by her, so I'm really excited to finally do that. And yeah, that is my book haul. Book Expo, books I bought, books I was sent, all the books. Excited to read these and let me know if there are any in here that you've read that you really liked or that you're most excited for and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!